Now, in a previous video, we looked at calculating these averages or these percentages for our survey data. And now we want to create some graphs so that we can look at um, the display visually. Now, in order to put this data into a, um, a graph, we're going to need to include the questions and the responses. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can create another table of values that is going to um, just separate out the survey results and put them in the graph separately. So we could copy and paste, for instance, our question information into another table and then copy the results in next to that. And that's another option. Another option that we can do is we can highlight the questions over here and then highlight the survey response over here. And so we're gonna actually look at these things in both methods. Now, these questions are quite long. Um, they're very wordy in this example. And so you may also just want to consider like summarizing them so that you don't have the entire question on the graph because the fact that these questions are so long will make them more difficult to display. Uh, but let's start with some of our options. So just starting with the, um, the scale survey data, let's suppose I hit uh, control and then I highlight this column. This is gonna be column number one. This is gonna have the questions in it. And then over here, I'm gonna have column number two highlighted, which is going to be, again, hit control to highlight both columns simultaneously. Um, this is gonna have the response data. Now, if you go then to recommended charts, um, sometimes this is not going to come up exactly the way that you had intended. Um, in this case, um, there's because we merged some of those cells, um, this is gonna look a little weird. Um, so sometimes you don't actually have all of the options that are available to you. Um, if you don't uh, merge cells, then usually this will work a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I have another spreadsheet with these um, results where I didn't merge cells. I just put them all in one cell. And so we're gonna try to copy and paste our survey results over there. Um, so let's see if I can find that. So I'm gonna copy these. Average survey response, copy. And when you go over to your uh, other sheet, you don't have to copy the formulas as is. You can just uh, copy the results. So if you go to paste as an option, you will have various options available to you. And I'm gonna paste the survey responses as just numbers and not as formulas. So in my other spreadsheet, I actually have the numbers that are actually still with the formulas in them. But by using this paste option, pasting the values, I was able to paste just the response, just the calculated values. So they're no longer connected to the formulas. If this uh, column of data doesn't line up exactly with the other um, spreadsheet that I copied it from, then those formulas would all be changed. They would be calculating on different data. So by pasting them as values, I ensure that the ones from the other spreadsheet maintain the same values. Now, if we then go and try this again, so I'm gonna calculate uh, these guys and then scroll over here, hit control and then copy these guys. And hopefully my, there we go. My graph looks a little bit more cooperative. Now, uh, if I plot the graph this way, these questions are all gonna print on top of each other. And that's very unfortunate. If I print them this way, I'm actually gonna get a little bit better response. Now, this, the questions are in the reverse order, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but 
it is something to sort of be aware of. Now, if I move this over here, uh, you should never leave your graph sitting on top of your data. You should always have it moved off to the side someplace. We will need to put a title into our graph. And so for that, I am going to put in this overall header for this set of questions. Um, just to provide some context. Um, now, if you get this situation where you the questions get cut off, you have two options for fixing this. You can make the graph taller so that the, the text will wrap around and display appropriately. The other way that you can do this is actually just widen your graph because that will also extend the amount of text that they're able to display on the graph. But ultimately what you want are all of the questions to display clearly. So again, one option is to try to summarize this. So if this is about the company's pricing, you could just summarize it with company pricing um, or online chat bot. And that should provide enough context in order to make sense of these questions without completely retyping the entire question. Um, now, technically, we should also have access titles. Um, access title. Call this average response. And questions. And again, we can make room for these by just adjusting the graph either longer or wider. Now we can do similar things with our other questions. And so if we go, for instance, uh, to some examples that I made earlier, so here is our yes, no percentages um, that are already pre-calculated. And when you highlight, again, you highlight the questions from end one, and then you highlight the yes, no responses over here, again, use holding on the control bar, then again, we have a similar issue. You can make the graph wider so that the text will, will wrap, or um, you can make it wider uh, in length, like longer this way, in order to display the questions on a single line like this. But in this case, we also have a legend down here that is specifying that these are the yes, no responses. Uh, no is in green and yes is in blue. Again, feel free when you're looking at some of your chart options to, for instance, adjust the color or things like that, um, because that is also um, chart styles. Um, you can experiment with some of these different options that are available. Uh, to make the graph display in a way that makes more sense or is stylistically more like what you had intended. Um, now that I don't like that one at all. <laughs> Um, but it'll all, you'll also notice the legend may get moved around or things like that. But again, feel free to experiment with some of these options that are available to you. Um, you they don't all have to look the same. Uh, you can also change like the color coding and things like that, which I did down here. Now for the um, uh, ABC questions, these uh, the way that we calculated these is not necessarily... Uh, the optimal way to make a graph because we don't have the names of the questions, like what, what are they responding to? And so what I did was I summarized the data. I copied the multiple choice question over to this side of the spreadsheet and I used the wrap text option in order to combine it all in one cell. And then I brought over my ABCD responses and I used just a pointer 
to point over to where I had calculated those values in percentage form to get them all in a nice table. And then when you highlight this information and then you go to your table, um, you will get all kinds of nice options that should appear. Um, bar graphs work okay for comparing um, percentages. Uh, they're not the best, honestly. Uh, if you run into issues where the data is not displaying, for instance, um, for instance, in this case, for a pie chart, um, then what you can do is you can actually go directly into the select data option and you can uh, extract the information that you do want versus the information that you don't want. So uh, pie charts don't actually work very well on lots of complicated data. And so one of the issues with doing like merge cells is that it's seeing these separate, these cells as separate columns. And so when I went into select data, I just unchecked those cells. That's why this thing was coming up blank. Um, and then I just selected the one that had the actual numbers in it. And then I also took off the questions because that's not actually, this question column is not actually, it should go as the chart title, um, but it shouldn't actually be a, a pie slice. So that is another option. And again, make sure that you have a title um, and you should ideally display these percentages on the graph. So if you wanna add those, go to the chart elements option, either here or up here, click on data labels, and then on this arrow, then um, you can select whether they're gonna be a value or a percentage. Uh, depending on whether you're displaying count, you have calculated counts or percentages. Here, both the value and percentage will be the same thing because we already calculated the percentages. You can specify where the legend is going to go. You can position them either inside the, the slice or you can put them on the outside of the slice or you can put them on the inside or closer in. There's a whole bunch of different places, positions that you can label them on. And as long as the percentage label is there, that's fine. They Ideally, they should be readable. So again, experiment with changing colors, um, depending, again, depending on where you wanna put them or what your preferred color preference is, um, but make it look nice so that it's easy to read and um, work with. And then we would do the same thing with the final question, calculate our pie chart, um, insert recommended charts, pie chart. And then we see we have some problems. We're gonna take off our question. Uh, we're gonna take off all but the last column. There's our nice slices. There's our legend. Um, we're going to put this question text into our chart title. We're going to display our data. And that text color is very hard to read against those background colors. So we can change the style. That's similar to the one we had up there. Some of these are very small. I don't like that at all. Uh, if you're going to put the labels on there, you don't really need the legend. So again, don't don't over clutter this too much. I think probably this one is still the one I like the best, maybe. But then um, 
I don't need this and these. Um, I can choose. I do want to see the value, but I don't necessarily need to see the category name if I have the legend out here. And I can choose, do I want best fit or do I want outside center? Hmm. Whatever. And then you also have options for um, oops. Uh, you also have options for nope. Um, you have quick layout options over here, or you can also make some additional option styles. Um, and you also have this change colors thing where, again, you can choose other color combinations. That maybe are more suitable for your taste. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is that uh, if you're looking at a case here where you are copying and pasting your responses into another spreadsheet, it may actually be valuable to just uh, eliminate the survey questions on one of the, uh, the sheets and then um, just have the questions and the average responses next to each other with the graphs. Uh, because including all of the raw data may be a lot of data to process. And so it may be better to have, say, the raw data on one sheet where it's all pretty and color coded and it's all laid out very nicely. And then on another sheet, um, have the just the questions and the summary responses and then plot the graphs next to it so that you have uh, different kinds of visual information on different pages. When you include all of the information on the same sheet, it can be quite cluttered and overwhelming um, and it's difficult to see all of the information all at the same time. So it's just a thought. It's not um, obligatory or anything, but if you're trying to make your spreadsheet easy to read, then it may be useful to have different kinds of information collected on different sheets. That's one of the reasons that we have multiple sheets available to us in a program like Excel.